Mike, explain to me what Augmate is. Um, right now, we're creating wearable device management software for heads-up displays, some um, smartwatches, basically anything wearable. Um, one of the biggest problems with companies trying to integrate wearables is actually keeping track of them, keeping track of what needs to be repaired, what needs software updated, um, how the battery's doing, where was that device last when the battery died. And that's a big uh, hurdle towards adoption, no matter how great the software might be and how you know, great, it might integrate into your existing systems to help with workflow. If you can't actually manage those devices, they're going to create more work than they're actually helping to reduce. So it's mostly about managing devices, and I understand it's mostly in the business environment, which are, would make sense because you have a lot of devices out for employees. So can you give me some, like, what are the, the most popular scenarios or what, what uh, people are looking to augment for to, to help them with or companies? Uh, well, one of the use cases would be in things like uh, warehouses or factories or uh, other cases like that uh, where you would have a bunch of uh, devices to manage. Um, and then so in cases of uh, like optimizing workflows and things like that, uh, wearable devices could have uh, quite a large impact. Uh, so um, those are probably the uh, primary use cases that we would see. And right on your side, are you talking about uh, heads-up displays? So I got to assume that using heads-up displays in a business environment, that's mostly for an industrial environment, yes? Um, yeah, industrial, any, really any place where there's unstructured work going on, where people are moving around, might need to um, you know, change focus because something else is happening elsewhere in the warehouse, yeah, industrial environment that they're in. Um, even for mechanics, you know, working on airplanes, yeah, manuals, part lookups, locations. So if there, so just can you kind of like walk me through a scenario, like a really common scenario of like why someone would have a heads up display and they're sending that information to whom and how that's helping? Can you walk me through that? Um, we could tie into existing systems that they have, whether it could be something where a company like UPS has their dyad devices where... What's a dyad device? Uh, it's that device that when the UPS guy comes to your house, they ask you to sign it sometimes. Sometimes they type something in. You know, it's usually on their hip, and they got a pen to write into it. So the UPS guy's got a, either a Google yeah. Glass, some kind of camera on yeah, his head that's looking at the person that's signing it, yes? Um, yeah, not necessarily recording them because, <laughs> yeah, all customers, people right now are a little leery of that, but it's providing information that they would otherwise need to waste a hand holding a device for. You know, so they no longer would have to grab um, their, hand, their device, type something in, they could just look at a package, scan it, they could have something else um, that's much less cumbersome to you know, deal with their packages. So the bottom line is you want to make the UPS guy work as little as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make everyone work as little as possible, even ourselves. <laughs> Are you trying to work as little as possible? Uh, that would be nice, yeah. <laughs> No, but you're working pretty hard. In fact, you you said that you did this video streaming heads up display project for about a month, and it actually seemed like uh, you know you got it to work. But you saw all the sort of the problems and the kinks with it. Yeah, it was actually a usable product. Um, just kind of ran into a lot of little pain points with uh, either quirks in the wearables or uh, quirks in the technologies or things along those lines. All right, you, you, you mentioned some of those before. So it hit me with the top two or three things. If I'm going to do a, a video display myself. What are the top two, three things I got to watch out for? Do not make this mistake. I know one is definitely use JW Player, and people use that for a reason. Why is that? Uh, it's probably the easiest thing to set up uh, in terms of uh, video players on the web and uh, on mobile devices and things like that. So, all right. So, what are the other two things, or two or three things I should watch out for? You know, essentially things you fell into that you that others can learn from your mistake. Uh, WebRTC isn't always uh, the nicest to play with. It's one of the uh, streaming technologies that I first looked into. And uh, you really got to examine your use case and determine uh, what kind of streaming technology is good for you. Uh, and then the other issue that you're going to run into is kind of this balance of uh, video resolution, battery life, and um, latency that you're going to encounter. Uh, you kind of have to pick one of them and just kind of throw it out the window. So I think you said what it was 480 at uh, 40p at 20 frames per second was pretty decent, yes? Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, one of the issues that we had on Google Glass, at least, um, was the software updates would uh, kind of change the performance for better or for worse.